Let's all rise for worship. The world is yours and everything in it is all at your command. There is no end to your domain. The planets shake, the galaxies tremble. They turn within your hand. There is no end to your domain. No height or depth you don't sustain. Great in all the earth is your glory, O oh God. The universe declares how amazing you are over history and eternity. You alone are Lord and King. The world is yours and everything in it is all at your command. There is no end to your domain, no height or depth you don't sustain. Great in all the earth is your glory, O oh God. The universe declares how amazing you are over history and eternity. You alone are Lord and King. There is none like There is none, Jesus, there is none like you. Sing great in all the earth, great in all the earth is your glory, O oh God. The universe declares how amazing you are over and eternity you alone are Lord and King for heaven spawn creation is pride and adoration treasures woven by his love his careful hands they hold us safe within his promise of calling and of destiny I will sing of all you've done I remember how far you carry me from beginning until the end, you are faithful, faithful to the end. A father's heart that's for me, a never ending story, a love that's always chasing me. His kindness overwhelming and hope for me unending. 
He's never given up on me, so I will sing, I will sing now, all you've done, and I'll remember how far you carry me from beginning until the end. You are faithful, faithful to the end. I will sing of all you've done. And I'll remember how far you carry me from beginning until the end. You are faithful, faithful to the end. Sing, there wasn't a day. There wasn't a day that you weren't by my side. There wasn't a day that you let me fall. And all of my life, your love has been true. And with all of my life, I will worship you. There wasn't a day that you weren't by my side. There wasn't a day that you let me fall. And all of my life, your love has been true. And with all of my life, I will worship you. Worship you, and I will sing of all you've done. I'll remember how far you carry me from beginning until the end. You are faithful, faithful to the end. Became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, a blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. Rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, the body. His blood, the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sin. The 
ransom from heaven. It's Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Sing, all our hope is in you. All our hope is in you. All our hope is in you. All the glory to you, God. You're the light of the world. All our hope, all our hope. The light of the world, Jesus Messiah, name of the name, and blessed Redeemer, you for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Amen. You may be seated. morning church welcome to riverside community church with that sunday worship service at this time let's have a passing of peace let's turn to our neighbors left and right front and back let's say peace be with you peace be with you happy sunday all right uh, welcome everyone especially those of us joining the first time we welcome you in the name of jesus christ as lord and savior um, we would like to get to know you, so after the worship service, please come see us in the back at uh, the table, the welcoming table. Um, we, have, we had our uh, Elmwood Park Spring Festival yesterday. Uh, thank you all those who came out. It was a lovely day, uh, lovely weather, and it was awesome. Turn I couldn't be there, I'm so sorry, because um, yeah, yesterday was my moving day. Uh, it was something else. Anyway, um, I, I heard great stories where everyone enjoyed the weather, and we had our prayer tent there, and uh, we prayed for various people, and um, yeah, hopefully uh, next year we get more volunteers and participate uh, together and uh, enjoy this Elmo Park uh, Spring Festival together. Next, we have um, RCC Women's Conference. Uh, on May 21st, Saturday, Liquid Church. The registration uh, link has been shared with you all via email, so please uh, check it out, and uh, please sign up today if you're interested. Any questions, please uh, contact uh, Jenny, Sonny, or Nan today. Um, Elmo Park's second community multicultural festival is on June 18th at the Borough Field. Uh, please come on out and enjoy this uh, festival that we have once again in our Elmwood Park in our town. Uh, any questions, please speak to uh, Barbara today. Our children's ministry, VBS, is happening this summer, uh, June 27th to 30th. I believe that's Monday to Thursday. So please come on out and volunteer. And uh, let's, um, you know, for me too, VBS was like, the thing for me during, during the summertime growing up in a church and uh and i actually saw our photos uh photo album man we, we went all out a couple of years ago with that decoration i saw the decoration where this like whole sanctuary was decorated as like a cave and like a like water flowing i thought it was a real water it's like real water flowing like coming down right 
Uh, and so we need a lot of hands and uh, to, you know, decorate the place, our sanctuary, our whole church. And uh, we need volunteers, clay students, even you know, college students who will be back. We need a lot of teachers to serve and teach our young ones. So please uh, speak to Pastor Eunice or me if you if you like to volunteer and help out for our BBS this summer. Once again, the date is June 27th to 30th. Our church-wide retreat is August 12th to 14th. Please save the date. It will be at our Spruce Lake. Once again, I saw pictures of these retreats too. Man, we had fun. We know how to have fun. Praise God. Amen. And uh, I saw these pictures and yeah, let's do it again. Let's come together and uh, feast on the Word of God together and just in our fellowship. So Save the date, August 12th to 14th, Friday to Sunday. We will have our Sunday worship service there. Um, so at Spruce Lake, sign up today. I believe the registration uh, link is uh, sent out via email as well. So please check it out. Um, Clay short-term mission trip is coming up. It's uh, uh, July uh, 25th uh, to 30th. So any clay students, we've been open up to our college students as well. If you're interested, please uh, sign up today. Once again, the registration link is sent out, uh, has been sent out to you via email. Make sure you check your email, our weekly update. Um, but the registration deadline is May 15. Okay, once again, that is May 15. So think about it, pray about it, and please register ASAP today. Um, Clay, we have a special outing on May 13th. Phil Wilkham, I don't know if you know the worship artist. Um, I think he wrote, uh, recently he wrote the Hymn of Heaven, uh, along with other artists. Um, I think This is Amazing Grace, right, Pastor Jay? Did he write? Yeah, This is, ama this is Amazing Grace, right? You guys, Okay, uh, this is amazing. He wrote that and so many other songs. He's a very famous, very well-known uh, worship artist. He's in town, Wayne, um, Wayne, New Jersey. So please, if you're interested, sign up, register today. Limited tickets available, okay? Um, so sign up ASAP. Once again, the registration is uh, provided to you via email. Our Saturday morning prayer is every Saturday at church here in our sanctuary, main sanctuary, 7 a.m. So in us as we pray for our church, the nation, and our brothers and sisters, and even pray for ourselves. Uh, Pre-worship prayer meetings is 15 minutes before our worship service, right over here in the conference room. Please join us to pray for our worship service. If any questions, please speak to Amos Kim today. Attendance and prayer. Uh, please let us know that uh, you're here, and any prayer requests you have, please fill out our Google Sheet. We would love to pray with you and pray for you today. I believe that is all the announcements we have. This time, let us go into time of offering. You can uh, find your offering information on the screen, or simply drop your offering on the way out after service. Let us pray. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom and you are exalted as head over all. We praise you, God, because you are worthy of our praise and we have gathered together in your house to worship you and lift your name on high. So help us, Holy Spirit, to worship you and praise you in spirit and in truth. Lord God, as we receive your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit would help us to open up our hearts and our minds and ears to receive your holy blessing. Lord God, we also pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Be with them in times of their trouble and need. We pray that you be the ultimate answer. Be with the families who have been afflicted. We pray that you would reign over those families provide them with your peace and comfort pray for the nation pray for the world we continue to pray for the nation in Ukraine we ask that you continue to be with them be with those who have been persecuted and hurt father we pray your peace continues to reign over them Lord 
Father God, we lift up this time to you now. May your Holy Spirit speak to us that there may be a great transformation in us today. We love you, Lord, and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, uh, verses 15 to 17. The Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. At this time, if you're able, please stand for the reading of God's word. Hear now the word of the Lord. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had... He he said to him the third time, love me. And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. He said to him, feed my sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Uh, Last time we had our joint worship service here was the Easter worship service. And, man, what a tremendous uh, blessing was to see Everyone, this house of God fully packed out, even in our fellowship hall. Um, it was just incredible. And even seeing our college students home, visiting, and, um, and I got to meet some of the faces that I haven't seen yet, only through a directory. But I saw, I feel like, you know, seeing a celebrity, because I don't always see the directory, but here they are in front of me. And it was so good to see them and just the worshiping together uh, in the house of God. Remember, our worship was uh, so much better. We were able to sing songs together. We were able to receive the word, uh, word of God together. I mean, we were able to celebrate joyously the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was an incredible worship. So it's, you know, after Easter, and I was praying and reading through the scripture to prepare for you know, this week's uh, joint communion worship service, and I came across today's passage where among the scholars, it's regarded as one of the turning point passages of the Bible, turning point passages of the Bible. One of them would be in uh, Genesis 15, 6, where Abram's simple faith was counted as his righteousness before God, and another would be, of course, Jesus' cross work. He died on the cross and resurrected, and it appeared before many. And today's passage, where we see the restoration of his beloved disciples. So we'll look into the Gospel of John, chapter 21 today. But before we, look, uh, we dive into today's text, I just have a question just to start us off. Um, anyone who know who this man is? Oh, uh, no. Oh, it kind of looks like him, though. Oh, wow. Immediately, how about the, um, was it the captain from Titanic? True. He's uh, Andrew um, Carnegie. Um, man who's known to be the greatest leaders in the American steel industry. He was once asked in an in- interview, what's your secret to having your business so successful? He answered, second chance, second chance. And he shared a story, having a heart full of forgiveness, and understanding, and providing yet another opportunity, a second chance, led my company to be successful. And then he shared a story when he was young, and in his 20s, he worked as a delivery man for, for a company. And one day he was entrusted with the company's large amount of fund. And, and, and he was chosen to hand deliver this bag full of cash to another company. So nervously, he got on the train uh, with this bag full of cash money. But on the way, so tired, he fell asleep. And when he opened the eyes, unfortunately, the bag was gone. 
actually fell out of the door. And with tears, he went to where the engineer of the train was and asked if the train could uh, reverse a few kilometers because he had lost his bag full of money. It was an impossible request and absolutely dangerous to reverse the train. But thankfully, the engineer saw the desperation in this young man's eyes, so he reversed the train for him. Fortunately, the young Carnegie found the bag with all the cash money inside. And from there on on, then Carnegie learned what second chance was and, it, it, and what it meant. And whenever he found these young workers making mistakes and was reported of them, he did not fire them right away, but he would meet up with them personally, face to face, and he taught them the right ways. So they won't make the uh, same mistake, mistakes over again. And he continuously encouraged them. This was his secret to having his business so successful. In today's passage, we see Jesus' forgiveness and the restoration over his disciples. Especially Simon Peter. And what Peter did cannot be compared to what Andrew Carnegie's mistake was. It wasn't just losing a bag full of cash. But he had previously denied his rabbi, his master, the one who, whom he loved so much, the whom he confessed that he would follow after him. He would go after him until the ends of the, uh, ends of the earth. And he did, but he denied and rejected this Lord. Not once, but three times. And he even cursed his name. So because of this guilt and shame filled inside of Peter, he went back to the Sea of Tiberias to fish again. In church, we all make mistakes. We all fall short. We all experience failures. We all experience closed doors in our life today, don't we? Perhaps this past week, we experienced one of these. But through studying of today's passage, looking at the encounter between Jesus and Apostle Peter, and how Jesus restores him with forgiveness and encouragement, I pray that we would also be restored and rejuvenated as believers and as God's beloved church today. Amen. Uh, we, we, with this passage, we often hear and study the love that is mentioned, um, that was asked by Jesus and answered by Peter three times. But I want us to look at the restoration, the restorations of Peter that he had received and experienced in Jesus and through Jesus. First, restoration in uh, relationship. Verse 10 and verse 12 we see. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Jesus invites the disciples to, uh, for a breakfast. Now, out of the three meals that pe you know, people prepare, preparing a, a breakfast was, wasn't easy at that time. And it wasn't like people saved you know, food the night before or they went out grocery shopping and then you know, saved in, uh, in the fridge and you know, they have breakfast the next day. They couldn't even have food for the very night's dinner. For lunch or dinner, they, they could actually, you know, work during the day and receive some sort of compensation, either money or uh, 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 money to buy food or simply receive food to, you know, feed yourself. But breakfast was a different. So people, all, people often skipped a breakfast. You know, growing up, I heard my uh, parents always say and greet, greet their friends, saying, have you eaten? And I, I was so curious why they would greet their friends, I'm saying, hello, how are you, but have you eaten? And what kind of greeting is that? And I found out it derived from their parents, their grandparents, and their great-grandparents, because back in the day, uh, you weren't really able to eat breakfast. So first thing they ask, and as a greeting, they ask each other, have you eaten? If not, they would try to go find something to eat together. All because it was so difficult to have this meal, breakfast. But Jesus, today we see that he prepares a 
a breakfast for these disciples. We see yet again Jesus being the servant leader. He continues to serve his disciples, his beloved followers. The disciples must be so hungry that after they, you know, they just finished uh, fi uh, fishing. And it wasn't like today where they could just stop by 7-Eleven or Wawa and grab something to eat. And it was this time where Jesus knew their need. They were hungry, physically hungry after their work. So Jesus prepared the fish and bread for his followers. There's something about eating together, isn't it? Having a meal together, a sense of connection, there's this relationship. And it's a whole other thing if you prepare a meal for someone. These past couple of weeks, um, you know, I had an awesome time fellowshipping with, with our RCC members, congregants. I was invited to a home, and it was a full cooked out lunch meal. And we were able to enjoy it outside under the sun. It was a beautiful weather. And I was enjoying the fellowship with you guys. And I had another time. Um, I had a dinner with the elders. Uh, it was awesome hangout in Paw Park. I almost felt like, you know, the old time when I was just hanging out with the I don't know if I can say this, with the youngs, right? The older brothers in, in Korean, right? Yeah, and we got bubble tea after. Don't judge, right? Yeah, we got, you know, it was a good meal, and then we got bubble tea after. And it was a nice hangout and just fellowship, something about eating good food. And the food was awesome, too. I don't know. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed takalbi. I don't know what's in, what it is in Korean, but yeah, I mean, uh, English. But good meal, good company, good fellowship, something about it. And I pray for this blessing over our church today, that we would know how to really fellowship with one another. Yes, eating together, dining together. They would know how to have this sweet fellowship because there's a purpose and a reason why God has called us, God has established this church, Riverside Community Church, that we would come together, that we would fellowship in his name. But I pray even more on top of that, that we would not just fellowship with the physical food, but we would feast, dine together in the word of God today. Amen. That we would feast on the word of God. And I'm looking forward to that retreat. I think that's, that's perfect where we're going to eat so much good food and just snacks and fellowship, but also we feast together on the word of God. So sign up today, August 12th to 14th. <laughs> Save the date. Bring all your, all your family members. Purpose and reason why Jesus invited the disciples is because he wants to restore this relationship. Jesus prepared a breakfast because he wants to teach them at the same time. At times it's difficult preparing and it's out of your comfort zone sometimes. Serve. Serve those who have been trusted to you. Serve those who are in need. It's what he really wanted to teach them before sending them out. Today we have broken relationships, broken fellowship, because we cannot find any serving in that relationship, in that fellowship. And another element we need is in order to restore relationships, consideration. We look out for one another. We care for one another. So look at how Jesus was so considerate to the disciples, especially to Peter. Jesus serves the breakfast to these disciples. In verse 15, he records that until they had finished the breakfast, Jesus did not speak. But if you were Jesus, I mean, I placed myself in Jesus' shoes. I think while I'm eating, I think I would have just, you know, I, I think it just came out. So let's talk about that, Peter. Why would you deny me three times? Right? It's almost like me and Mason, maybe, you know, you know why'd you do that, right? So let's talk about it. Why'd you betray me, Peter? Why'd you deny me three times? Well, look at Jesus. Jesus waits after the breakfast. He calls out, 
Simon, the son of John. Even here, Jesus says, Simon, son of John. And he says three times, why not Peter? Why Simon, the son of John? If you know Simon's new name, Peter, it was a name that was given by Jesus. There's a reason why Jesus calls him, not Peter, but Simon here. Peter in the original word is Petros, and it means foundation. Peter just experienced one of the greatest failures in his life, not the most, because he failed miserably. So he, he went back to fishing in the Sea of Tiberias. And if Jesus comes and calls this name, Peter, that's been given to him, foundation, how would he feel? Feel so guilty, so ashamed hearing that name, Peter, from Jesus. Knowing this, Jesus then calls him Simon. Simon, son of John. This is our God. This is our Jesus. This past three years after this new name was given, Peter, no one called him Simon. Everyone addressed him, Peter. But here, Jesus calls him Simon, son of John. Why? To help him restart, regain, have him restored and redeem Simon, son of John. Peter was miserable. He was filled with guilt and shame once again. He was in such pain after denying Jesus and cursing his name. Knowing all that, Jesus gently and softly calls Simon, the name which he first called out when he first met him on the shore. Imagine with me Peter's face when he heard the name Simon, not Peter, from Jesus. We long for a restoration in our relationships today, in our family, in our workplaces, in our church, in our friend circles. Let's remind ourselves of how Jesus was here in today's passage. We say we're Christians, Christ followers, the imitators of Christ. Then let's look at how Jesus was here. How he served his disciples, especially Peter, serving, caring, and seeing his need. As we imitate Jesus this way, I believe our, all of our relationships will be restored in him. Second restoration is the restoration of love. Jesus asks Simon a question. We see in verses 15 to 17, Simon, son of John, son of John, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Do you love me? Once again, I just pictured this in my head again. Pictured a dinner table, a dining table, and a spouse that looks at the other and asks, do you love me? No, of course I do. The other spouse probably, you know, answer. But if asked the second time, you might look at your spouse a little funny and a little weird and say, yeah, of course I love you. Is everything okay? What's wrong? What's going on? If the third time asked, you're putting your utensils down. You're putting your forks down, right? Okay, what's going on? Come on, baby girl. What's going, what's going on? No, right? What happened at work? Is everything okay? Are you sick? Right? What'd you do? Right? But you see, there's a reason why Jesus asked three times just to restore Peter's love for him. Now, Peter responds to Jesus all three times by saying, yes, you know I love you. But look at me here in verse 17. It says, Peter, the third time I asked, Peter was grieved. This was Peter's honest heart feeling. The first two times, Peter answered Jesus confidently, yes, you know that I love you, Jesus. But on the third time, Simon looked into his heart, deep inside. And it doesn't mean that his heart was heavy. But it means he took his time to think, think about before he answered the question. And think about Jesus' intention here. Because you and I know Peter's personality is like a fire, it says in the scripture. Right? And he 
kept saying, he was the only one who would go to the ends of the earth for you. I'll be wherever you are. But what happened? Peter experienced a complete failure. and He arrived at that conclusion where he realized that he's not the person that he thought he was be. He realized his limited strength and knowledge and will. And church, that's very biblical. I believe that a faithful believer, a true believer, a true Christ follower is someone who knows that he or she is a limited being before God. That he or she needs God's presence in every day, every moment of their lives. See, the forbidden tree in the beginning was there for Adam and Eve and all of us to know that, that we are limited, finite beings before God. And that God is the only creator and the life sustainer, life giver, and so that life is in the hands of God. And brothers and sisters, I pray that we realize this truth this morning, that we are his creation, that our God is our creator. But that creator loves the world so much that though we have been fallen, we have sinned greatly, that he has sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that we may be redeemed and restored as the precious sons and daughters of the Most High. Amen. See, Peter realized that. That's why he took his time to think about what he was going to answer. See, Peter's love previously was very self-centered. And he had said all that, that I'm going to go to the ends of the earth for Jesus. I'm going to be where you are, Jesus. May have been, may look him, uh, uh, made him look good, so, so good in front of people, but it was all for himself. See, church, how do we check our uh, faith maturity in Christ? It's when we realize that we are absolutely nothing before God. And that there's nothing that we can do in the gospel work. What Christ has done on behalf of us. When you start to understand that the salvation that we have been given, we have received, it's all because of Jesus, not by any of our works. It's the sign of maturity and our love for God. Because there's nothing we can add to that salvation. See, even in our relationships, even in our love to one another, how do you know if your love, if your love for others is maturing when you realize that you're lacking so many ways? The night I was looking at Mason, man, other fathers can do this, do that, and I found myself lacking in so many ways. That's when I realized God's love, God's intervention in our lives, his life, my family's life. How do you know that your faith and your love for God is maturing, your faith and love for one another is maturing? That when you realize that you're lacking in so many ways, so many areas. And through this, these questions, true love was restored in Peter. With that, lastly, restoration and calling of, G, uh, of, of Peter. After hearing Simon Peter's response, Jesus commands him now, feed my sheep, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. It's the very calling to the ministry, to the gospel work. It's this very thing that Jesus wants for Simon Peter now. Now I want us to focus on what Peter said when he responded to Jesus. And it's this confession that we want to learn from him. When Jesus asked, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Simon. He responded, Lord, you know. He said, Lord, you know. You know everything. So many times in our ministry, so many times in our life, we often try holding on to this this, this, this life, as if it's, it's all ours. But we see Peter here letting go of all things. He's not confessing, like, once again, like, like how he was. But he's simply confessing that you know God. Lord, you know all things. He's wholly trusting in Jesus Christ. He's letting go of his will, 
making Jesus, inviting Jesus into his life, making his will, Jesus' will, his will. Lord, you know. Lord, you know everything. Take me, lead me. I'll simply follow. I'm letting go of all my desires, letting go of all my wills. I yield to you. I submit to you. Lord, you know. Because you see, Peter knows, now realizes that he's so prone to make mistakes. They can fall again. They can experience failures again. So he confessed, Lord, you know. You know everything. Church, may we surrender in every area of our life today. Making his will, our will, they may be restored and rejuvenated in him. That our love and faith for him continue to increase and mature. May we encounter Christ Jesus again in our lives and experience his restoration both in our relationships, in our church, and our relationship with Christ Jesus today. Let us pray. I spent some time in prayer thinking about the message the restoration of Peter, Jesus. The fact that Jesus once again came to these disciples. We, we, we realize that we see that all over the scripture. It's always God who comes, Emmanuel God. So again, Jesus comes to these disciples, especially Peter, to redeem and restore. So let's pray. Spirit of God, come. Come like a rushing wind right now, God. This past week was rough. This past week, yes, I've been falling short. Made mistakes. But Father, by your love, by your grace, restore me. Rejuvenate me, God. Redeem me. I spent some time in prayer like before moving into time of communion, receiving the bread and the cup, Lord, empty me and fill me with what's yours, your will, your desires. Because Lord, you know, you know everything. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you're our God, our God who loves us so much. Even at times of trouble and failure and our mistakes, you come because you love us so much. Lord, today we have studied the story between you and Peter, how you have restored and redeemed your beloved child, your beloved disciple. And we know that we worship the same God, same Father, having restored Peter. And Lord God, we long for that restoration because we confess there are times where we have fallen short, made mistakes. That our love for you was running dry. But Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit will water our hearts now. That our love for you, our faith in you would only grow and increase. Restore us. Rejuvenate us. And with that, Lord, even pray for our church. Oh, Holy Spirit, we ask it may be a restoration because we know that 
your God who has all things in your hands and has a great plan for your beloved church. So Father, lead us. All we can say and confess is, it's like Peter's confession. Lord, you know. You know everything. We yield to you. We submit to you. Thank you for your word. I pray all this is in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear now the words of institution of the Holy Supper. On the night of his arrest, Jesus gathered his disciples. He took the bread. And after giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you can go ahead and take the top lid off. It's the body of Christ broken for us. In the same way, he took the cup, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink. This is a new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, until he comes again. If you can go ahead and take the second lid off. Blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. It's time let us all stand and cite our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are King. Stand here in the midst of us. We raise you up with our praise. In Jesus, we enthrone you. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are king. Stand here in the midst of us. We raise you up with our praise. And as we worship in your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. And as we worship, and as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Let's bow our heads and receive God's blessing. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the amazing love of our God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us all who long for a great restoration and transformation in our lives. And we long for a deep love and a faith in Christ Jesus 
now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.